I think every once in a while we all go out and buy stuff that is completely unnecessary to have, but it's still pretty awesome so we buy it anyway. So that's pretty much what this video is going to be. Really cool gadgets and other stuff that might be pretty expensive, way too expensive for it to ever make sense to buy, but it's pretty cool so you get it anyway. But that's not going to be for everything, some of these things are actually pretty cheap, but they are still probably super unnecessary, but still fun. So I'll put any links in the description if you want to check them out. First up, we have somewhat of a scientific instrument kind of gadget. You may have used something like this ever if you've taken a science course, chemistry course, and these are micro pipettes. So you may in the kitchen use things like measuring spoons, or you might have like a measuring glass, but if you ever have to measure something super precise or super small amounts that are precise, you might get something like this, a micro pipette, in which case it works by you press down the plunger, it lifts up, you'll have like a little tip, and then it will dispense that exact amount. And there's a couple different ones. This one has a much larger tip, so this one goes up to like 10 milliliters, and this one does 20 microliters, super duper small. These actually are not ridiculously expensive. They're like 50 bucks, and like the video suggests, it's not something you'll probably ever need, but I don't know, maybe if you are into chemistry or something like that, or you come across a situation where, I don't know, you wanna mix something with precise amounts, then something like this might really come in handy. Or if you're just a science nerd, then something like this is always just fun to have in general. All right, next up, we have something that I think is pretty darn cool, and it is a radiation detector card. So this is called a rad triage card, and basically it senses radiation and it will tell you if you're ever exposed to any large amounts of radiation. So you can see on this card how it works. It'll show a big bar and that's basically the measurement. So, and then it will say above it and below it are different colors or shades. And if that middle bar ever changes to one of those colors, you can look at it and say, oh, I must have been exposed to 50 millisieverts or whatever. And then you can also see on the right side, there is an indicator that basically tells you the status of this thing because they don't last forever. So if the square here ever gets to the same darkness as that bar on the right, it means over time it's been exposed to so much heat that it's probably not gonna work as much anymore or it just is expired. Now the cool thing about this is obviously it's pretty small and it's enough to fit in your wallet. So you can kind of carry it around, show it off. It's like a cool thing to show off at parties or whatever. It's just an interesting conversation piece. And the numbers on here are again in millisieverts, but these are actually pretty large amounts of radiation. If you get exposed to 50 millisieverts, that's kind of a big deal because I believe if you get to around 1000 millisieverts total over the course of your entire life, that could be literally a deadly amount and it would cause like deadly cancer or something like that at that amount because radiation exposure is cumulative over your entire life in terms of risk. So unfortunately, if you did have this with you and you see, oh, I was exposed to a deadly amount of radiation, there's not really anything you could do about it, but it would warn you that you have been exposed to that and I guess you can at least prepare for it and maybe mitigate whatever damage it does ahead of time. This one's also not too expensive. It was only like $20 on Amazon. Um, I would actually not recommend getting it with Prime because Prime, they just kind of store it in an Amazon warehouse for who, kno who knows how long. And I believe the seller I got these from were Nuke Pills, so I would personally recommend that. They shipped it out and it had an expiration date that was pretty much brand new. So unfortunately you won't get it as quick, but you'll get a new one. So again, something that I think is just cool to have, and at least if you get a deadly dose of radiation, you'll at least know it. Now, speaking of radiation, here's another cool thing that will actually help you. You may know about these. These are iodine pills, and these are used only in an emergency, like if there is like a nuclear bomb that goes off or something like that, or maybe a nuclear meltdown if you live near a power plant. The idea behind this is you take this and it attaches to the thyroid in your body and will block radioactive iodine, which may be part of fallout or if there's a meltdown, it will produce radioactive iodine and if that binds in your thyroid, it can cause a ton of damage. So 
if you take this after there is fallout or something like that, then it won't, the radioactive stuff won't stay in your body, so it kind of protects you against that. Again, this is not something you would take every day. You would literally just take this if there was a public service announcement by like an official authority that says you should take these because there is radiation, but they are good to have. Only like 10 bucks for all of these. I think you only need like one of them, and I don't think they expire. Yeah, they expire in like, 2022 so they last pretty much forever now this might be pretty obvious but this would not protect you from the radiation it literally just protects you from that one aspect of whatever danger there is from the radioactive iodine binding into your body but you'd still want to get the heck out of there because there's other radiation sources but the problem with the radioactive iodine if you inhale it and then it kind of goes in your body then even if you get out of that area then it's still in your body doing damage so this way you'll you're protected against that little part of it so again something that will probably never be necessary to use but if you do ever need it there it is, it's a great thing to have. All right, next up we have a gadget that I think is super fun. You've seen me talk about this before. This is a satellite phone. And basically this uses, as you can imagine, satellites in the sky. This is an Iridium network. So there's different satellite networks. There's Global Star, I believe, Iridium, Inmarsat. They all have their own networks and you have to buy a specific phone made by each network to use it. And the idea behind this is if you ever go anywhere that might not have cell reception, maybe you're going hiking or you're just kind of driving through the boondocks or whatever, then this will give you a signal no matter where you are if your cell phone's out. Problem is satellite phones are extremely expensive. They cost like $500 to $1,000 upfront to buy it. You could buy a used one probably, but they're really expensive to buy and then you have to pay the monthly or prepaid fee to use the network, which might be like 50 bucks a month. So definitely expensive. Probably only want to get this if you think you would need it. So again, as the theme of the video goes, almost never will need it, but if you ever do, could be a big deal to have. And I did actually make another video about satellite phones. If you want to check that out, I think it's called Should You Get a Satellite Phone? So you can find that. And that should be a good informational video too if you want to learn more. All right, moving on to the next completely unnecessary thing to buy. This is an oxygen tank called Spare Air Escape. Now, Spare Air makes scuba tanks just like this. This is actually the same exact one, they just kind of package it as one called Spare Air Escape. And the idea behind this is you have this kind of just in your house in case there's ever like a fire. And you know how if there's a fire, then the oxygen goes away pretty darn quickly and you might pass out from smoke inhalation. But with this, you might have a couple minutes of spare air and you can get out of whatever fire smoke situation you might be in. This thing was really expensive. It was like $350 and it did come with a couple other things like a face mask, a rubber face mask, which I think is just like a swimming mask. So you probably could just buy one of their regular spare air things and it'd be the same thing, but you'd probably have to fill it yourself. But in any case, if you are super paranoid about having a fire in your apartment building and you think, oh, I'd never be able to get out in time, then this might be something that would uh, alleviate your fears. You just literally put your mouth on here, start breathing and the oxygen comes out and then you can escape with it. All right, moving on, we have one that might not actually be as stupid as it seems up front, and that is a breathalyzer. Now, this is a really legit one that like is used by police departments and stuff, so this was like several hundred bucks, so this is definitely extra, you could call it, but they do have some that are pretty legit that are like a hundred bucks, so you probably expect to spend something around there, and that would be one that uses a so-called fuel cell technology that's a lot more accurate, so a hundred bucks for one of those. But anyway, you might be wondering, why do I need a breathalyzer or whatever? Or you might think, oh, well, I never drive while drinking anyway, which is good, I never do either, but it might be good if maybe you're having a party or something like that, and maybe someone else decides, oh, I'm good to drive, and you're thinking, I don't think they are, then you could be like, oh, well, Here's a way you can find out and you can kind of prove it to them. It's like, dude, look, you're not okay to drive. You're like way above the legal limit. And then 
maybe you convince them to just stay and crash at your place or whatever. But on top of that, it doesn't have to be all super serious. You can kind of use it at a party as like a fun thing. Of course, that could get dangerous if people try to gamify and see who can get the drunkest. So you always want to drink responsibly and maybe not do that, but it's still fun to have. And it's an interesting thing you don't see every day. Now, I know you guys probably want to see a demonstration. So uh, I'll show you guys. Basically, you have this detachable plastic piece on this particular one. It has an auto test, so you just kind of blow into it and then it'll beep when it's ready and tell you. So let's see. So it beeps and then it tells you. And of course it says 0 0.000 because as far as I know, I have not had <laughs> any alcohol anytime recently. So, but the one you buy might also have other functions like just a binary yes or no alcohol detected and other stuff like that. All right, up next we have one that isn't as unreasonable as you might think, and that is a fountain pen. Yes, fountain pens are still around, and they aren't as expensive as you might think. They actually make like disposable fountain pens, and they work pretty well. Honestly, I actually prefer a lot of times writing with a fountain pen. I think it's nicer to write with, could be just placebo than a rollerball, but they are pretty nice and they just have like a little tip and the ink kind of just flows on there and using capillary action goes onto the paper. The price of these is going to vary widely. You can get like cheap disposable ones for probably like a few dollars and then they make some that are like hundreds of dollars just like any other extremely uh, lavish pen you could buy. This is a Lamy Safari. This is kind of like a beginner nice pen, I guess you could call it. It's about $25 and I think this writes really nicely and of course it is refillable so you could use this for a long time so even though it is a pretty expensive pen if you enjoy writing with it and you find it easier to do signatures and stuff like that it's more consistent for writing then $25 might not be as bad as you think so yeah if you never used a fountain pen before I think at least get the cheap ones just to see what it's like okay finally we have one that is definitely extremely unnecessary even after I bought it I was like why do I even have this but got it for the video at least that's my excuse and this is a extremely bright flashlight and this thing is called the ace beam x80 gt and this is like 32,000 lumens which is just completely unnecessarily and stupidly bright you'll n almost never need anything to be this bright you can see all the giant leds in there there's like i don't even know how many of them and it actually gets so hot on the maximum brightness, it literally comes with a detachable handle so you can hold it while the rest of the body gets so hot that you don't wanna get burnt. Now, it can only do the maximum brightness on this for about one minute and then it starts to overheat so it automatically drops down to like, I don't know, 8,000 or 4,000 lumens, which is still insanely bright. And it comes with four giant batteries. And this thing is definitely so bright, you don't want to look at it on maximum brightness at all. It could literally blind you if you look at it for like straight for a few seconds. And part of the reason this is so unnecessary is the price. This thing, believe it or not, is a $330 flashlight. Yes, it's a $300 flashlight, so it is among the brightest ones in the world, but then you're gonna get an extremely high price on there. Believe it or not, there are flashlights that go like five or $600. This is not even the most expensive one you can buy, but that's just ridiculous right out of the question. So don't go out spending too much money, guys. I hope you go and enjoy some of my other videos, and until then, be seeing you.